address a question that I've been asked quite a lot lately, particularly with the volatility that we're getting in the markets, particularly with the volatility that we're getting in crypto and in the American markets, you know, what's happening is a question I'm getting asked a lot is, am I too late? Have I missed the bottom? Have I missed my chance to get in? And should I get in now? Because they feel like they're, they're feeling the firm and they feel like they've missed out, particularly if you go and uh, we take a look at uh btc you know take a look at bitcoin i mean look at where we are from the bottom you know i can see why people are totally getting fomo right now and people are feeling like they've missed out and they want to get in now and they can feel the pressure to get in because we're already up i mean what percentage are we up right now from the bottom so from the bottom here to where we currently are on bitcoin this level it's like 140 percent from the bottom down here from like fifteen thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars all the way up to the top at what thirty seven nine seventy two so 140 percent move on bitcoin on the weekly up to where we are now and this is causing a lot of FOMO in the market. It's causing people to feel like they've missed out. And they want to know if they're going to get a second chance to get in. Now, I personally think that you have not missed out on the opportunity yet. I personally think that you are going to get the opportunity to buy in again at some point next year. I'm currently recording this in November of 2023. Uh, and I think in the first sort of quarter or the crossover of the first quarter to the second quarter of 2024... I feel like that's going to be the area, that's going to be the time when you get the next buying opportunity on Bitcoin, Ethereum, anything you're kind of looking at. And the reason for that, the reason that I think this is if we go and look at interest rates in the past, I think this holds the key. And I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see. Interest rates hold the key. So if you go and look at previous interest rates hikes, and obviously um, with the lower interest rates and the catalysts and reasons for this and understand interest rates and recessions and catalysts, right? Is we know in 2008, which is right here, we had the financial crash of 2008. We also know that in March of 2020, which is here, we had the COVID dump, okay? Which was like the mini recession that came. Now, what's interesting from these two points, so this point here uh, and this point here, is that we were raising interest rates before we had the recession. So what's happening right now is that we've raised interest rates and we're currently up at these levels here. And we see that we have this like plateau at the top before we hit that recessionary cycle, okay? Now you wanna go back to here, it was the, it was the turn of the century, it was 20, uh, 2001, 2002, we had the dot-com bubble crash. And you know, prior to that, we raised interest rates, we have this plateau area and they lower interest rates into a recession. And right now you can see that we're at this plateau stage. We could potentially go higher from here we're not sure um i know the federal reserve are keeping a 0.25 percent increase in reserve but i think that's just kind of like to temper the markets down and stop people from going fomo but um it's just interesting to note that they do lower rates into a recession because they need to um they see the coming calamity and they have to adjust for that because they know there's a between a nine and 12 month today for every interest rate hike and they know that they have to adjust for that time span and so they have to have that plateau period and begin to lower into a coming recession uh before before that happens our next year 2024 we have the halving for crypto we have the presidential election uh, uh year also the federal reserve have come out and said that they want to increase their balance sheet before 2030 by upwards of 40 trillion dollars which means that the um the federal reserve balance sheet which i do not have up here at the top i thought i did they're going to increase that by 40 trillion dollars now that literally means they're going to be coming in and buying assets they're going to be coming in and buying apple buying tesla buying stocks buying crypto reason for that is to prop up the markets right and add liquidity now just think about what that that's point going to do for the market right now i'll pull it up we'll go look at the federal reserve balance sheet here we see we have the total assets that are held by the federal reserve on their balance sheet they're right now they are contracting, they are selling, which which is why, you know, obviously we've had the uh, the massive amount of selling that's going off. They're one, contracting the empty money supply, which means they're removing currency and liquidity from the system. They're also selling to bring down their balance sheet. They've been doing that for the past like two years or so. And currently right now you can see they're, they're still selling. But 
their balance sheet is 7.8 trillion 8 trillion dollars right now and they want to increase this always a 40 trillion before 20 uh 30 so that's just really something to consider that this is going to be upwards of 47 or 48 trillion dollars just on the federal reserve balance sheet and they're gonna have to print this out of nowhere they're gonna have to print this currency and the only way they can print this currency is with low interest rates because we have a recession they lower interest rates into the recession and then when we have low interest rates down here they print cheap liquidity which is increasing the empty money supply to prop up the markets cause bailouts quantitative easing and then assets go parabolic because the dollar devalues against it so you have not missed the boat you have not missed the time you need to watch the interest rates once they begin to lower interest rates at some point maybe into the end of this year or the start of next year once they begin to lower interest rates like they did here into a recession and like they did here into a recession and like they did here with covid into a recession once they begin to lower interest rates here it's like okay i'm switched on now i need to go and look at the markets for a potential capitulation event to potentially get your entry points because i feel like after this this dump this capitulation event that is coming at some point next year once that happens that's where you're going to miss the bottom if you don't buy this here i feel is just a uh bear market uh bear market run bear market bounce whatever you want to call it liquidity call it collection to the upside um me and my group were doing some ta the other day and we feel like we're going to go and hit this peak which is like forty-eight thousand or forty-six thousand up around there we could just peek over the top a little bit and then dump but i feel like the crucial time to be looking at the market is some point next year but in my opinion you have not missed the boat 